Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, your host, and it's time for a new car review, new all-electric review in this fantastic, wonderful, lovely 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 SUV. Yes, this is the SUV version of the high-end EQS sedan that's already on the market, and I did a review on that, so you can check that out. Uh, earlier because you're going to find a lot of similarities between this vehicle and that vehicle in the platform and of course the inside um, and the technology and stuff so first i want to thank mercedes benz canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle this is brand new to canada that i'm it's only been out a couple of weeks now for the press so i'm one of the early ones to get it really excited about it um, and i'll give you just a high level overview of my you know my experience with this vehicle and the range and you know the ev system and all that kind of stuff and uh, obviously they build beautiful cars so this should be a good review so sit back relax and enjoy the show now as always we're going to start out with the design and the looks of this vehicle as i said this is a big suv it's a five passenger but this does have the third row option to it so you could squeeze a couple more kids into the back i'll show you the back seat in a bit it, that third row is really tiny but it is doable but for all argument's sake, this is a good, well-spaced uh, five-passenger SUV with lots of cargo space, some towing capacity. So it's, it's what I would call a full-size SUV or pretty close to a full-size SUV. It's on the same platform as the sedan, so it's the same length, the same width, just uh, higher. My understanding, it does have a package. It's all air suspension, so it does have a package that will lift it. So if you want to do some off-roading. So what it, it is nice that uh, Mercedes has taken that EQS design, the very uh, streamlined aerodynamic design, and put it into this SUV variant of the EQS high-end sedan. So this is marketed. This is a very expensive um, uh, uh, SUV, and I will get to the pricing at the end of the show. So it's not going to be for everybody, but it is a fantastic vehicle. If you're into the uh, three-pointed star brand, you love the build quality you know this is just a fantastic build quality and i do love the looks i've actually had some people that have turned their heads looking at this so you know very you've got that same big uh, flat grill here all glass you've got nice animations as well when you welcome when you turn the lights on when you turn the car on all that kind of stuff great projection great light lighting system because i have taken it out at night now that the days are getting a little shorter and just kind of carries that design that the design language on right i mean an suv is not going to be as aerodynamic as a race car or something but it's going to get the job done and keep it um, as efficient as it can be for the weight and size of this vehicle so overall it's just a beautiful looking vehicle i love the design of it um, and uh, let me tell you some more stuff about it now, one thing I can't do in this vehicle is open the front hood. Just like in the, the 580, um, the EQS 580 sedan, it's controlled by Mercedes. They don't want you opening this up. There's no handle to actually open it up. There is one hidden under the dash, but you got to dig for it and take something apart to get to it. But they don't want you. They, they, they want to service this. And I talked about it on the other show. Main thing is they've got a fairly... Um, a deep HEPA filter system in here. I think a two or a three stage filter system that's quite complex. So they really don't want anybody monkeying around. There's no frunk available on this sedan, on this SUV. You've got lots of storage in the back as I showed you. So what they, you know, in order to do something like put windshield washer fluid in it, if I can't open the, the, the bonnet, how can I get fluid in there? Well, they've got this side access port. So it just pops out a bit and there's a little tray here. You just pour um, the, your windshield washer fluid into this tray and it seeps in, do it nice and slow and then it'll fill up and then you're done. So um, that's how you do that uh, to get uh, the fluid. Otherwise, you don't need to open the front hood. The EQS SUV offers plenty of space and comfort for up to seven vehicle occupants in its avant-garde luxurious interior, according to Mercedes. It's got the same wheelbase as the EQS sedan at 3,210 millimeters, but obviously the ride height is increased because it's an SUV and with that air suspension you can raise it for some quasi off-roading needs. That suspension is made up by a front four-link axle and a multi-link suspension at the rear. As I mentioned, the EQS SUV is a dual motor electric setup pushing out a power rating of 536 horsepower with 633 pound-feet of torque. This power will push the EQS SUV from 0 to 60 in about 4.5 seconds. Pretty good for a big size SUV. 
Now the battery pack in the EQS SUV is rated at 108.4 kilowatt hours of usable battery capacity. This is providing an EPA range of 458 kilometers or 285 miles. Charging the battery pack via AC can be done either at 9.6 or 11.5 kilowatts. And for DC fast charging, the maximum capacity is 200 kilowatts. There are multiple driving modes available in this vehicle. In addition to the dynamic select modes, you have Eco, Comfort, Sport, and an individual setting which lets you customize a lot of features. And there's also an off-road mode for off-road driving. Furthermore, for the quick handling, rear axle steering with a steering angle of up to 4.5 degrees is standard. This provides plenty of maneuverability in the city and agility over land. Optionally, and also via an OTA update, a version with up to 10 degrees steering angle is available. For those road trips, Mercedes Me Charge is offered, which provides access to one of the largest charging networks worldwide. It currently comprises over 850,000 AC and DC charging points, including around 350,000 in Europe. Since 2021, Mercedes-Benz has ensured a subsequent offset with green electricity when customers use Mercedes Me Charge to charge their cars in Europe and North America. And while you're driving, you'll be breathing clean air. With Energizing Air Control Plus, Mercedes-Benz thinks holistically about air quality in the EQS SUV. The system is based on filtration, sensors, a display concept, and air conditioning. The HEPA High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter has a very high filtration level to trap fine particles, microparticles, pollen, and other substances entering with the outside air. The EQS sedan was the first model series from Mercedes-Benz in which additional vehicle functions can be activated in several areas via over-the-air updates OTA. Now with the EQS SUV, this offer is significantly expanded. For example, Trailer Maneuvering Assist or MBUX, which is the Mercedes-Benz user experience, Augmented Reality Navigation can be activated at a later date. Inside, the EQS SUV features the type of rich materials and high-tech equipment that define modern-day Mercedes-Benz models. Its list of standard interior features includes selectable ambient lighting, heated and ventilated front seats, leather upholstery, a panoramic sunroof, and wireless charging. Right, so here's just a quick look at the uh, MBUX Hyper Screen, I believe it's called here. Uh, that came out in the EQS. It's a very similar uh, system. In fact, it's the exact one on the sedan. This one has the optional passenger display as well where you control functions. You have to be sitting in there. But it's got all the goodies, right? All the EQS stuff for um, range consumption, if you want to see what that is, all that kind of stuff and what the consumption is so far. So some good options here to look at. Um, lots of different things, a really nice nav system, a nice big binnacle here with warnings and stuff, lots of different controls. Um, I'll show you some of the driving stuff in the driving. The ambient lighting is really nice, so lots of different uh, options for that. You've got um, very, very touch sensitive lights, so all you have to do is just kind of just touch them and they come on and off in the controls and even the, the power um, screen here for the sunroof or for the panoramic roof is very, very, you just have to kind of move your finger through that gap and it does it automatically. And as you can see, it's quite a large opening back here for that. Very comfortable seats, obviously top end finishes and fit. I mean, this is an expensive vehicle, so you're gonna get that. Um, you know, okay, uh, console here. Um, you know, you've got these uh, different um, pieces here to, for, to form, to conform to different size cups. It takes a little while to get used to. Your phone goes way back here on a, on, a, uh, on a charging mat, which I find awkward, but it's not a bad thing because ideally you want to put your phone in there and not look at it, right? Because you can do text, you can do messages, you can answer calls here and, and through the button. So I get that they want you to put it away so you don't get distracted by it. There's enough information here to distract you, so don't really need you to look at your phone. And of course, that big uh, console storage area here that opens up, lots of stuff in here. 
uh, boy, somebody, there's headphones for the passengers, two sets of headphones, uh, some more USB ports, all kinds of stuff in here uh, that people are going to look at. Nice storage underneath here that seems to be popular from a lot of the SUV uh, products now that are coming where they have these middle storage. Um, so uh, that's pretty good. Just a good use of space. It's very comfortable. I've done on a couple of uh, hour and a half long drives now and just a beautiful machine, extremely, extremely quiet. Uh, memory settings for the door, so smaller door pockets, but again, you, you, don't, you don't have, um, you know, uh, you don't necessarily need a lot of storage because you have stuff in the back. So just a beautifully equipped cabin. So as I mentioned, the use of materials of very high quality is in excess in this vehicle. For maximum technology, the EQS SUV can be equipped with Mercedes' mesmerizing 56-inch hyperscreen, which stretches across the full width of the dashboard. Along with housing the digital gauge cluster, it hosts a 17.7-inch touchscreen that's primarily responsible for infotainment functions, plus a 12.3-inch touchscreen in the front for the passenger. There's no doubt that the novelty of the glass-covered dash will entice buyers. But I can't help to bemoan the near total lack of physical switch gear. I really wish there were some physical buttons. Now those who don't opt for the hyperscreen will still get a digital gauge cluster and a 12.8 portrait style touchscreen. Every EQS SUV will come standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a Burmester audio system and wireless device charging. Also coming standard in the EQS is two rows of seats that accommodate five passengers, but a third row is optional and adds seating for two more people. All right, so how, how does it uh, feel to get in and out of the back seat? Well, it's covered, as you can see, it's pretty easy to get in and out. Nice uh, high headroom here, so I don't really have to duck too much. Tons of leg space. I put these seats back a little bit, back to the normal position. So even with the big screen options that these have, each passenger has a screen for controlling music, the air back here, uh, some entertainment features, that kind of stuff for them to play with, even setting up some of the features in front. So it depends what you want to allow these screens to do. There's also a climate control here because that's standard, but these screens are optional. Uh, and they are adjustable, as you can see, they tilt. They don't swivel, but they tilt up and down. And even with that, there's lots of room in here. Nice grab handle, some LED lights. Very, very comfortable cabin. Big armrest with another little screen on it uh, for other control. So you can control pretty well everything on this thing <laughs> as you want. Uh, one thing, I, I'm not a big fan of having the seat controls in the door, but I get it. That's where they are. I'm kind of so used to grabbing down here. Uh, but it's very comfortable seats, um, beautiful cabin, and nice, easy to get in. So I've put the uh, third row seats up, as you can see, and you only get maybe about a foot or something of room here for cargo space. So it's very, very cramped. Had to take the parcel shelf off here. So it's a very, very uh, small uh, third row, something that you would use. I mean, quick, you know, a couple of kids for a shorter trip. I wouldn't probably put anybody back here for a long time. I'm sure how it looks like from the other side. All right, so now that I've been able to figure out how to get into that third row, there's a button on the top of each of the uh, the back seats here on each of the sides. You just push that button and what'll happen is, you can see the, the second row slides in, the first, the driver's seat folds in, so it slides up and then it folds down. And that's to allow somebody the clearance to get into this space here. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so here's that space with the seat folded down as you can see. And sorry, this is a little shaky, but um, it's a very small third row. Now, when you, this is the button I talked about, and when you push it back, it will actually raise the seat up, as you can see, and slide it back. And it won't slide it all the way because it figures that you've got somebody in those two seats behind you. So see how it'll leave that space because before I had it without the space. So it is, it's got some intelligence there. 
And then of course it repositions the driver's seat to where it was. So it's got some intelligence and it will work, um, but it is a pretty small back seat again. Uh, I'd be very uh, hesitant to put anybody for a long time, but certainly doable. Now this does have, as I mentioned, big cargo space. Open the trunk, it's easy. Push the button, you can use your remote as well, which I have in my pocket. Nice high lift uh, uh, trunk, but lots of room. There's even a little storage cubby under here to put your charging cable and some of the accessories. It's not as deep as Tesla's uh, well in the trunk, but it's a good size to put uh, the charging cable and a couple of items down in here. So overall, a nice, uh, good size boot area. Uh, the specs for the sizes are, are showing up in the screen. One thing I do like about it is we did do a grocery run the other day. We went and uh, did uh, quite a lot, lot of groceries and stuff. So I like the low left or lift over, as you can see here. It's not, don't have to really lift it up over something when you're having heavy bags and stuff like that. So it's nice and easy to slide in and out. A good loading and unloading capability. Comes with a tonneau cover as well for the back there. So just, you know, a nice use of space here. Um, you know, good enough, obviously, to carry kids soccer stuff hockey stuff all that kind of stuff because these are really built for families or people that are hauling some people around and stuff in a lot of occasions so they've done an excellent job with the craftsmanship and the uh, uh, the workability of this now there are a couple controls here that you can lower the back seats down um, for the interior room but again overall great use of space all right, so I'm here in the uh, EQS 580 SUV, and one thing I didn't, I don't think I did on the other review was the nav. So I've actually put in a destination, I'm going somewhere today, and utilizing the nav. And one thing that's pretty cool about it, as you can see, is it takes a picture, it activates a camera. Uh, in this case, it would be the uh, over the mirror camera, the center mirror camera here, and points to the intersection that you need to turn at. So rather than just getting a visual cue and a voice of, you know, turn right uh, 50 meters or whatever, here it actually puts a visual. So it takes a, a camera, live camera feed of that intersection. And with all these arrows, as you can see, tells you where you need to turn. Um, pretty cool stuff. Um, that's one thing I haven't seen in a lot of the other uh, OEM's products is that level of detail from the navigation side. And of course, you got this humongous screen here as part of the MBUX uh, in infotainment system and uh, tech system that's in that's optional, of course, for the three screens. This has the passenger screen on it, which is activated when somebody sits in that, via that uh, seat. Um, but I just thought that th that nav portion is pretty cool. It's something different that uh, we haven't seen. All right, so just a quick check on this quiet road of the lane keeping and adaptive cruise control functions, uh, as I always do. So um, I've got it set to 77. It's asking me to put my hand on the wheel. So as you can see, it's a nice big display in front of me here. And uh, I'm just basically not touching the wheel at all. As you can see, it's a very nice, smooth um, lane keeping capability here, what they call their active steering assist. Um, and it works quite well. I'm not providing any input at all during these, uh, these last 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, speed is fine. Of course, it's starting to give me the warning to put my hands on the wheel and then it will start showing this and it'll start beeping at me and then back to the green symbol to show that the active steering is active. So it's pretty simple that it's just got your uh, adaptive cruise control. I've set the distances here um, of the, the vehicles. Um, just put that back here. Uh, just trying to remember where that button is. There we go. So the vehicle distances there that you can do one, two, four, uh, all that kind of stuff. So coming up to a stop sign. So I do have to manually disengage it because this is not like full self driving where it'll recognize stop signs and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a nice smooth lane keeping assist and uh, cruise control function, adaptive cruise. Now. And also while you're in adaptive cruise and lane keeping, of course, adaptive cruise being the main one, it will uh, bring you to a stop if the vehicle in front of you stops, obviously. Um, so here I'm behind a truck. It tends to get a little close there because I can't really see the bottom wheels as you're instructed when you learn your license. And I'm not touching any pedals. The vehicle's moving itself as well when the vehicle ahead moves forward. As long as that steering wheel is showing green there um, and the adaptive cruise steering wheels for the lane keeping. So it uh, does a pretty smooth job. It's uh, One thing I like about it is it's not that aggressive. I wish it would leave a little bit more space and I have it set to the maximum um, here, but um, it's doing a pretty good job. And even with the turn signal, it doesn't disengage the adaptive cruise right away or um, the lane keeping. Um, I will brake, so I'm gonna hit the brake at that point so I can disengage it. But it's a pretty smooth system, uh, a lot of finesse 
from these higher end vehicles. Now, one thing that I did have to remind myself on this vehicle is the one pedal driving. So this does not have a one pedal driving functionality. I know there's a lot of owners, users on the uh, EQSs that have been asking for it and it may come eventually. But the solution around that is to put the vehicle into strong recuperation. So there's a couple different modes of strong, there's uh, normal and then there's intelligent. And intelligent is, is kind of strange um, and it can catch you a little off guard. So I've been leaving it in strong and then I have um, the creep uh, turned off. And creep is where you let off the brake and the car, the vehicle starts moving forward just like you would in a normal automatic ICE vehicle. And so I turned that off so that it will basically hold and we're used to the hold function in a lot of EVs. So this will do the same. So in combination of strong recuperation and the hold function that I've turned um, uh, on, uh, turned off creep basically, uh, with a little practice, you can gauge it. So I'm right now I'm slowing down just with the accelerator. I haven't touched the brake pedal at all. Uh, I have going to have to turn here at this intersection. So as you can see, I'm just turning down. Uh, I'm just slowing down, and now I've let off the accelerator, and the vehicle has come to coasted to that stop, and it's held. I'm not touching any pedals at all at this point. I'm not touching the brake. I'm not touching the accelerator. So the vehicle is holding itself in the position. So that is as close as you're going to get to one pedal driving um, uh, functionality in this vehicle by just activating uh, the set of those, uh, those features. Now, um, since I'm talking about driving here, um, obviously this is just a wonderful vehicle to drive. It's so quiet. It's just absolutely stunningly quiet in here even wind noise. Yesterday was fairly windy and I'm driving a little bit of highway and it's very, very quiet. Um, I don't have to talk very loud in this vehicle at all. Um, very smooth to drive. It's in custom. I have it in um, comfort mode as far as um, the main settings. I've been going back and forth to eco and comfort, uh, but the suspension is the same. It's got an air suspension, so it will. you can lift it up if you want. You can raise it a bit, uh, but this is the normal height that I'm at. And it's just a very nice floaty type of suspension. Uh, so it, it takes away the bumps, smooths everything out, yet still gives you some uh, some good um, inputs from the road as far as what's going on. The steering is very response uh, responsive. It's uh, you know it's power uh, steering, so very easy to steer. Just a very comfortable car, and that's what this is. This is a high end, very comfortable SUV. Um, this particular model has the three row, so it's going to give you a nice high comfort level, a good driving dynamic and, and characteristics. Yes, there's sport mode. Um, and you can customize some of the modes. You can do some. Now, one thing that's pretty cool, I've been driving for about an hour um, on my destination, and it came up with the suggestion of this Energizer mode, and um, I wasn't sure what that was, so I pressed the button to say, sure, go okay. And what it does is, obviously, it detects that you've been sitting for a bit. So it's a mode where it heats up the seat. It's got the uh, seat heaters on. It's got this funky display going with this heartbeat sound, this very calming music. And there's a light massage going on in the seat. And I believe what that is, is just to start to, you know, get the blood flowing a little bit better uh, after because you've been sitting for a while and the, the vehicle knows that. So it's trying to just to kind of get, uh, you know, get the blood flowing a little bit better in the body while we've been sitting because I haven't gotten out and stretched or anything like that or walked. So pretty cool feature. I noticed that in the... Uh... So otherwise, from a driving perspective, this is just a fantastic vehicle to drive. It's super comfortable, very, very nice um, and luxurious and quiet, just like you know the sedan version was. Only thing is you have much more height. It is a big vehicle. It's got a long front, so it's a big vehicle. I haven't driven big vehicles for a while, um, so it is, um, it is bigger than I'm used to, um, but it just takes a little bit of time and adaptation to figure it out and just to get used to the space. Very nice vehicle, as I mentioned. Great acceleration for the, the, the weight and size of this vehicle, as EVs do. Um, and right now, the range is, is doing quite well on it. You know, I'll have a, more data at the end of this uh, review. But uh, so far, everything is really nice. Um, all the tech in it, it's comfortable for passengers. My wife was able to find a really nice, comfy seat. Um, and these seats are very nice supported. They have massage, they have heating, cooling, uh, you name it, everything. So uh, again, well done, Mercedes. Now, if we look at the safety and driver assistant features, the EQS SUV does have a host of standard ADAS features, as we call them, or driver assistant technologies. 
So along with the ordinary safety equipment, such as adaptive cruise control and automatic high beam headlamps, the SUV also has a self-parking feature. Key safety features include standard forward collision warning and automated emergency braking, standard lane departure warning and lane keeping assist, standard adaptive cruise control, and blind spot monitoring. And just to reiterate that the EQS SUV is based on the all-new EVA2 platform and that's what underpins this vehicle to provide all the driving dynamics. And of course, all this vehicle is going to cost you just a few dollars, folks. If we look at pricing in the US, the base MSRP for the EQS 450 Plus starts at $105,450. You can move up to the EQS 450 Formatic, which has a base MSRP of $108,450. And you can move to the top of the line EQS 580 Formatic, starting at $127,000 dollars before options. All right, and for us Canadians, there's only two variants that'll be offered here in Canada. It'll be the EQS 450 Formatic and the EQS 580 Formatic. With the first coming in at an MSRP of $136,000 Canadian and the 580 having a MSRP of $158,500. My tester came in at just over 187,000 with all the goodies, including premium package and third row. Just a reminder that these models are built at Mercedes production facility in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. What I could certainly attest to and what other owners love about the EQS SUV is how refined it is. It's quiet and how smooth the ride is. In other words, it has all the trademarks of an electric vehicle. However, thanks to Renault and Mercedes build quality, luxury appointments and cutting edge technology, it puts it in the argument as one of the best luxury EVs in the 2023 model year. All right, so I hope you enjoyed all this stuff about the EQS 580 SUV. As you can see, it's a fantastic vehicle, um, and it should be for the price point that it has, you know, to be honest with you folks, but MB knows how to build vehicles. This is another class act in the EQ lineup. Again, starting from the top, moving their way down. They've got the EQB, EQA, uh, smaller SUVs, EQE, the smaller sedan. So they are starting to bring, gonna be able to have more products that bring the price down but obviously always start with the higher end uh, in these. So obviously, you know, is this gonna be a recommendation? Absolutely, folks. Again, this is a beautiful all electric with great range, um, uh, very, very nice mannerisms. It's not a sports car. Yeah, there's a sports mode and the Europeans, you know, want to be thrown around a little bit, but 
this is a family hauler, that's how I see this, or people hauling stuff, pets, whatever, going, going on long drives, that kind of stuff. With the fast charging as well, be able to road trip with no problem in this vehicle, being able to support uh, the charging speeds that it does. So a great job by MB to bring another fantastic product to market. And I do look forward to seeing some of the, the, the smaller scale products, the little bit smaller vehicle footprints and some of that price points coming down for the three-pointed star with the newer product. So thank you very much for watching. And again, thank you Mercedes-Benz Canada for allowing me the press use of this press vehicle for a few days. Uh, thank you for watching me, as I mentioned. And if you're not subscribing on YouTube, please do. Would mean a lot if you did. Um, give me some comments, thumbs, uh, likes, dislikes, whatever. Doesn't matter. I just keep doing what I do, folks. Uh, so I hope you, you get some benefit out of it. Uh, again, if you're interested in Patreon, you can check out the link below. See what all that about. A cup of coffee a month if you want to help sponsor me to continue to do my antics here. That would be great. I appreciate it. Um, and keep watching uh, the EV uh, market space because there's just so much going on now. I mean, it's really hard to keep up with all the stuff that's going on from a news and from a model announcement. It's that that tsunami has hit and it's continuing to move forward. So I, I always love to see more products coming out. So everybody, again, stay safe. And until the next episode, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.